The Behemoth is a small independent game studio known for creating hits like Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater. Every game they create usually receives critical acclaim and praise, and this is due to the time and care they put into each of their products. However, what happens when a game studio speeds up their process to get the product on the shelves? Will it still be as amazing as their previous works? Will it fail horribly? Or will it fall somewhere in between? We answer this question and many more in our review of Pit People on episode two of Renegade Reviews. Pit People is at its core a strategy role-playing game. It's a strategy game because the player is placed in charge of a group of characters and controls them as they do battle with other characters on a hexagonal grid. The combat is turn-based, so the player moves their units to the desired position, and then the enemy moves their units to the desired position as well. If the player moves their piece next to an opponent, the characters will automatically have a battle to the death or fight until the piece is strategically moved out of range to recover. The true strategy of Pit People lies in knowing where to move your units, and this is accomplished by looking at the strengths and weaknesses of all your characters. Swordsmen are great for doing damage, but lousy against armored enemies. Club-wielding princesses deal less damage, but are highly effective against armored enemies. Archers are great at taking down enemies from afar, but as soon as they get close, it's game over. This goes on for every type of character, because truthfully, every type of character feels balanced and designed to contend with certain types of enemies. One pro tip I'd like to give is to always have a hair wad on your team. As silly as it sounds, these things are tanks and will literally level enemy teams almost single-handedly, as well as serve as a beefy wall to take damage for your team. Speaking of, you are going to need a beefy wall to take damage for your team because this game is no joke. Despite its humor and visual charm that we will get into later, this is where my biggest criticism of Pit People lies. This game is notorious for its difficulty spikes during some of the latter quests. There is a difference in a game giving a challenge to the players and a game being a challenge to get through. Instead of introducing new enemy types to work against, or introducing enemies with higher HP, Hit People reverts to the cheapest way in any video game to extend playtime and increase, I use the term rather loosely, the difficulty of the overall game. Pit People just throws more and more of the same enemy types at you over and over and over again. The challenge does not feel fair at all, especially when you are limited to having a party of only six people to fight in the pit. There are ways to tweak your team to allow more, but if you want to be prepared for every type of enemy, and trust me, you will, this is honestly a hassle and a chore to deal with in the late game storyline quests. I genuinely wonder if they had to rush this game out to meet a deadline, or if they could not think of any other types of challenging gameplay, because, at least for me, it severely impacted the gameplay and replayability. Looking back on a few points I made earlier, the thought of the game being rushed makes me genuinely sad, because this game is also an RPG. In short, you're a blueberry farmer named Horatio, who sets off on a quest to rescue his son from an evil space bear. Crazy, I know. But to accomplish this task, you undertake missions for rewards in a fleshed out overworld acting as a bridge between each battle. The behemoth's outrageous sense of humor and visual style are on full display in this game, and the characters you meet are charming and unique in their own special ways. I just can't help but wonder how much better the story would be later in the game if they had time to flesh out everything. Once again, many of the later cutscenes and plot feel rushed, and the animation in the final cutscenes are subpar, especially coming from a studio comprised of former Newgrounds animators and editors. It just left me wanting more. Let me reiterate, this does not mean Pit People is a bad game, and this does not mean you should not buy it. It is a fun game with unique visuals, funny characters, and for the most part, good gameplay. All in all, the gameplay is mostly balanced except for a few late game missions. Keep in mind, I have barely scratched the surface and I just beat the game. There are still many side quests to accomplish, characters to capture, and customizations to unlock for your team. If that isn't enough for you, there is also an online component where you can either fight with your friends or battle them to decide who has the better team in the pit. The only thing holding back pit people is the obviously rushed storyline and the cheap difficulty spikes. I firmly believe though that with a few post-release patches, this game is worth the bang for your buck. If you're willing to look past its flaws, Pit People is a fun adventure full of life waiting to be tackled. Until next time, this has been Renegade Reviews, back to you guys in the studio.